Hey everyone, Stargeek here. George Lucas, one of the greatest visionaries in film history, the creator of one of the best sagas of all time, and one of the most hated men on the planet. I found myself thinking about the director after reading the thousandth hate-induced posts about how he ruined someone's childhood. Why does everyone hate him so much? And more importantly, does he deserve it? How did he go from being the hopeful dreamer to a greedy businessman? George Lucas began his career as an aspiring filmmaker, hoping to entertain moviegoers through fantasy and imagination. He teamed up with Gary Kurtz to create a movie adaptation of the science fiction serial, Flash Gordon. They attempted to buy the rights to the show in 1971, but were rejected by King Features. Lucas was still determined to make his dream come true, so he started writing his own sci-fi fantasy, taking inspiration from The Hidden Fortress, Metropolis, The Wizard of Oz, and of course, Flash Gordon. The script went through multiple variations, with drastic character, visual, and plot changes. Over the next few years, he would put all of his effort into this film, The Adventures of Luke Starkiller, as taken from the Journal of the Wills, Saga 1, The Star Wars. The stress of time constraints, a limited budget, and creative limitations took a toll on the 32-year-old director. He was diagnosed with hypertension and exhaustion. No one believed in this film. The actors never took their job seriously, the crew begrudgingly worked on the low-quality science fiction flick, editors refused to take input, and even Lucas's closest director friends thought the movie would be a flop when they saw a pre-screening, with the notable exception of Steven Spielberg. When Lucas finally finished the movie, he went on vacation to Hawaii with Spielberg to start writing the story for one Indiana Jones. To everyone's surprise, Star Wars was a huge hit. The box office success of A New Hope allowed Lucas to fund the following films in the series to continue the Star Wars legacy, creating one of the most successful and universally recognized film sagas of all time. So where did it all go wrong? Most people blame the special editions, which I'll cover in a moment, but first we have to look back a little bit further. Critically acclaimed as the best film in the saga, The Empire Strikes Back was one of the most important steps for the series. If Episode 5 failed, the rest of the saga never would have happened. A large part of the success of Star Wars and Empire was due to the hard work of producer Gary Kurtz. He had almost as much say as Lucas did when working on these movies. Unfortunately, in 1979, when nearing the end of post-production on Episode 5, Kurtz and Lucas split ways over disagreements, one of them being the ending to Return of the Jedi. Kurtz wanted the last installment of the trilogy to be poignant and bittersweet, while Lucas fought for a happy ending, dancing with Ewoks in the trees. In the end, we know who won, but this wasn't the only reason the duo split. Gary Kurtz reports that both A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back were greatly driven by character, while Return of the Jedi was really driven by toy sales. This was a point in time when the profit from merchandising was three times greater than ticket sales, making that Lucas's top priority. This was the first sign of Lucas's downfall. While many people think that Lucas left Star Wars behind him until 1997, he never really stopped. During the time between Episode 6 and the Special Editions, Lucas worked on two Ewok movies, two seasons of the Ewoks cartoon, and one season of the Droids cartoon. To some, this may seem meaningless. To some, it may seem like a cash grab. But you'll have to decide on your own. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Star Wars trilogy, George Lucas released the films in an all-new restored format with tons of edits, additions, and changes to the movies. Unfortunately, this didn't work out too well. The backlash from fans was unmeasurable, and he only made it worse by adding more and more onto the films. Some of the dishonorable mentions include the terrifyingly ugly CGI job of the Hutt, the awful Jedi Rocks dance number, and the inclusion of Hayden Christensen's Force Ghost. I've covered all of this in this video here. George Lucas claims to have made these changes because these were his true visions that he wasn't capable of making due to technical limitations in 1970s filmmaking. That rationale didn't work out when he continued to go back on these true visions, adding in Luke's scream and then getting rid of it, and recreating Obi-Wan's crate dragon call three times. While these changes were mostly unpleasant, that wasn't what made people angry. Hatred for Lucas sprung when he refused to release the theatrical editions in a high-quality Blu-ray format. George claimed that it would be too expensive to restore the prints that they stripped for the special editions. He didn't really think it mattered what the fans thought. In a 2004 interview with Today, Lucas claimed, The special edition, that's the one I wanted out there. The other movie, it's on VHS if anybody wants it. I'm not going to spend the, we're talking millions of dollars here, the money and the time to refurbish that because to me, it doesn't really exist anymore. It's like this is the movie I wanted it to be, and I'm sorry that you saw a half-completed film and fell in love with it, but I want it to be the way I want it to be. I'm the one who has to take responsibility for it. 
I'm the one who has to have everybody throw rocks at me all the time, so at least if they're gonna throw rocks at me, they're gonna throw rocks at me for something I love rather than something I think is not very good, or at least something I think is not finished. Many people saw this as complaining, blaming the fans that they didn't like what he put out there. They thought it was childish and unnecessary. Of course, it didn't stop there. When the prequels came along, all hope was lost in the formerly praised visionary genius. Thousands of people lined up for a movie experience that the general populace soon deemed as unpleasant and disappointing, disgraceful to the Star Wars name. I for one don't hate the prequels, while they are nowhere near as good as the originals, there is some sense of nostalgia for me, and I always try to look at the positives of these films, which makes the viewing experience much more pleasant. But with the over-the-top CGI, terrible dialogue, and plot points that ruin the old stories, Lucas ended up on many people's bad side. While the prequels introduced the saga to a new generation of fans, and were without question good for toy sales, the films ended up being despised by old school Star Wars fans. Lucas' attitude from there has been very negative, where he feels like he's been picked on and bullied. It got to the point where he sold the saga, vowing to stop making any more films. When the now Disney-controlled Lucasfilm rejected the story he put forward for Star Wars Episode 7, George felt truly disconnected from the saga that he created nearly 40 years ago. He praised The Force Awakens on first viewing, then ragged on it, and then took that all back. He's been a pretty big mess lately. When looking back at the work of Sid Gannis, the publicist for Episode 5, Lucas has been quoted saying, Sid is the reason why The Empire Strikes Back is always written about as the best of the films, when it actually was the worst one. Quite contrary to popular opinion. This almost seems like a way to just pick at the nerves of fans. You can see the toll the internet has taken on Lucas with the responses he's given to some questions from Vanity Fair. You go to make a movie and all you do is get criticized and people try to make decisions about what you're going to do before you do it. You know, it's not much fun and you can't experiment. You can't do anything. You have to do it a certain way. So what are my overall thoughts on the man who went from being a filmmaker's idol to a reviled billionaire? Personally, he's one of my favorite people, an idol. As much as I've criticized him for the special editions, or taken an even lower blow in mocking his weight, George Lucas is a genius. Has he done wrong? Absolutely. But he's a visionary genius not only for creating the Star Wars universe, but also for groundbreaking special effects, the magic of ILM, and development of the THX sound system. Simply put, he's had an incredible impact on the way movies are made. He is a very giving man, a great philanthropist, pledging to donate most of the proceeds from the sale of Lucasfilm. He is the creator of my favorite franchise of all time. In my opinion, the positives outweigh the negatives. Without George Lucas, we wouldn't have Star Wars, Indiana Jones, American Graffiti, THX 1138, Caravan of Courage, The Battle for Endor, the Star Wars Holiday Special... Okay, somewhere along the line there I went a little bit off course, but that's not the point. George Lucas didn't ruin your childhood. For many people, he was the one who made it in the first place. George Lucas's reign may be over, but I'll always remember him as the visionary who created my favorite films of all time. So what do you think of George Lucas? Please tell me in the comments. Until we meet again in a galaxy far, far away, this has been Stargeek. Any character in Star Wars, who would you be? Uh, I don't know. Charge Jar When me so left you, sir? Me so a better learner. Jar Jar is a key one. We get Jar Jar working. Because he's a funnier character than we've ever had in any movie as Now, me so. Is the master.